first piece is called The Fence in Nogales. There is a fence running through Nogales, Arizona. It is tall, metal, topped with barbed wire and pulsing in places with high voltage electricity. The fence is to keep immigrants out. The fence is to keep Americans alert. The fence is a symbol of authority. The fence is an abstract. Its random bleh, randomness takes some getting used to. There is a fence running through Nogales, Arizona. It goes for miles in either direction and is monitored constantly and loaded with weaponry. The fence is to make immigrants ashamed. The fence is to make Americans feel safe. The fence is a symbol of elusive opportunity. The fence is a wall. Aren't military walls made for climbing? There is a fence running through Nogales, Arizona. No fence lasts forever and no single wall can hope to contain men's spirits and minds. The fence won't deter restless immigrants. The fence won't solve America's problems. The fence is a symbol of white men's fear. The fence is a roadblock. When you cross one, you find another way in. Do we have any uh, fans of film noir here? All right, maybe we'll get this. This is called Multiple Sarcasms. <laughs> Her swift, snide remarks hit me like a ton of bricks in the face. Is that your head handsome or did your neck throw up? <laughs> what did you get that outfit, the Salvation Army or Mars? You know, it's a miracle you can even tie your own shoes. My pulse quickened. Cotton mouth took hold. My mind raced feverishly. Who the hell was this chick? Not too fast on your feet there, are you, hot stuff? Was she reading my thoughts? She handed me a business card. It's my number. Go on, take it. You just might need it later. All I could do was blink in awe. You don't say much, do you, bright eyes? That's all right. I like that in a man. Well, adios. She smiled and walked away. My mental scorecard flashed. Game, set, match. I was smitten. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one is for who I hope is the only Petrakos in the room. This is called Someone to Do Laundry With. In the annals of our love lives, the key to a lasting relationship is the ability to do chores with a genuine smile on your face. Think about it. Have you ever done laundry on a Sunday morning with Saturday night's booty call? I seriously doubt it, my friends. More to the point, love, sex, kindness, affection, sure, we need all of these things, but in the end, don't we pine for someone who will stick around? Someone to share the burden? Someone to fetch extra quarters? Someone to go easy on our hangovers? Someone to point out which socks and t-shirts have holes in them? Someone who understands that you'd rather be anywhere else, doing anything else, other than the tedious time waster that is the weekly laundry ritual, but you just can't imagine doing it without them. Damn. I think I'm getting old. This last piece is called Building the Perfect Hipster. <laughs> Take a gaunt teenage runaway or a kid with selfish parents. Drop him in the brutal world of modern high school life. He is in awe of the in clique. They are not jocks or nerds. They are not impressed at all. He badly wants to be accepted. They know it and take him in. They remake him in their image. He now sports a partial mullet. His glasses are three sizes too big for his narrow face. His pants are far too tight. His shoes are 10 years old. His socks boast Teddy Ruxpin. His shirt is ripped and then duct taped just because he can. He wears neon plastic bracelets. He looks constantly bored now. He says, that's funny, instead of laughing at people's jokes. He is indifferent to drama. He strides with entitlement. He is not impressed with you. The innocent Midwestern kid has disappeared deep inside. <laughs> Only therapy will find him. But tonight, it's roller bingo, and he has a choice Depeche Mode lunchbox to show off and a vinyl record store girl to woo. Thank you. <laughs>